love sending Kim pics because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to. Funny, do. mama. So <laughs> that I was like, I had to like a son. Too funny, mama. What's with the grin? Well, hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Too Funny Mamas. I am Sherry Shepard. And uh, welcome to Too Funny Mamas today. We are not. We don't have Kim Whitley today. Kim Whitley's uh, undergoing some stuff, so she can't be with us. She'll be back in maybe next week or the week after. Feel free to guess what's going on what big news is happening, all of that stuff. I'm so excited, but I'm so excited to have you guys here. I think I she's pregnant. Mom. Kim Whitley? That's my guess. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, Sherry. <laughs> this is Chris Dedman, our producer for Two Funny Mamas. I'm glad you could make it, everybody. We're not gonna be on long today. We're not gonna. Oh, we got lip gloss. We're not gonna be on long today. But we wanted to get this. Oh, I'm sorry, my computer is shaking. Uh, so we're here. We got some special guests. I'm really excited, Chris, because um, we just I just came off the road in Baltimore, Maryland, mm -hmm. and that was fun. And I took Andre with me. Love that. Heard a lot of good stuff. I had a really good time in Baltimore, and I heard you guys did too. I was there we a week, a week well. before you, if people are just tuning in for different reasons. But yeah, looked like an amazing time. You had, what, five shows? We had five sold-out shows. And it was really great. I love it. I know uh, we'll have some more to talk I'm about right. that uh, in a bit. Well, where, where'd you go? Did you get I'm stuck? Right are, you, are you under a shelf? No. Under a, under a really big heel? And they're really no no i had to hold on my dress is i'm just having problems with this dress um yeah i had to uh oh my gosh i went yes yeah, so we just got back from baltimore it was five sold out shows and i took andre and one of the surprises was he had asked if i could get tickets for his mama and her, three of her girlfriends to come to the show which he never he's gonna buy tickets and i'm like you never have to buy tickets for your mom like she's family so i thought you know what his mom she lives in another city uh, like near dc and she never gets to see andre uh, go on stage a lot so mm -hmm. i said this would be really a fun a fun surprise for andre's mom and her girlfriends to actually see andre go on stage so i said andre do you want to come out and like open for me. And I said, the only caveat is you have to be clean. And he delivered. He was so great. He stuck to his time. He killed. And this, he walked out. His mom was sitting there in the front row. You know, so surrounded, we saw surrounded by deacons. <laughs> he was, it was, it was sold out 500 seat theater. She was, it was sold out. And so when they said his name and she walked out, it was just like so amazing. I loved it. She was so surprised. And he said, he said, how you gonna put my mom up in the front row and I can't oh. talk about my beep. <laughs> but that was funny. That is, that uh, funny. we'll have to hear about him. You do have another uh, fill-in host sitting in today if we wanna say hello to her. I'm very excited. Uh, this is a fill-in, I met this, young lady through Kim Whitley. They are actually writing partners and um, she's out hanging with Kim for a couple weeks. And they're also working on the many myriad of projects that they have that they're pitching to Hollywood and writing. And this is C. Mickey. C. Mickey, mother of two boys, son in the Hello. Navy. Show us your t-shirt, C. Mickey. Boom. Proud Navy, Navy mom. mom. I know. I got all the stuff all of a sudden. Thank you. I'm so proud of him. It's in the Navy. really incredible. You know what's so funny about this? I just gotta. I just gotta digress for one moment. I'm gonna put my glasses on. Um, 
How come you got your computer set up faster than Kim gets her computer set up and you're using the same oh, damn computer? Well, I'm tech savvy and Kim is not. So okay. there's that part, you know. That's a lot because I literally, it takes a good 20, 30 minutes for Chris to get Kim's computer set up, which you are using right now. And I just, yes, you I came on and popped on. The only thing you said was, Where's the sound? And then it was off to the to the races. Well, and I was actually sitting on the couch watching American Idol. For some reason, I've gotten back into American Idol. I can't sing. It's not my thing. But I am so invested in this show right now. I have no idea. Why. I'm never. I stopped watching American Idol. That's very that's very interesting that you watch it. Well, there's nothing else on TV. No, you so, know what? I have been binge watching like nonstop. What is uh that that Dick Wolf show? All the Chicago stuff, Chicago, uh -oh. Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, Chicago PD. Like I really been watching the Chicago Fire with the black uh, uh fire department captain. A lot of yeah. sex, a lot of sex, but I nice. love it. That's like, one. I'm into nine one one. You watch that one? Oh, that's Angela Bassett. Yes. And there, well, so there's two. There's 911, which is like based here in LA. And then there's 911 Lone Star, which is based in Austin, Texas. But I got to tell you, one in, based in Austin is kind of not realistic. Like there was a volcano. There's no volcano. There's no volcanoes in Austin. No. They actually wrote that in there. Nobody did the research. I mean, wow, some of the vote. And they're always coming from downtown. And then they end up in like, this is the one thing I don't like about like how Hollywood shoots the South. Anytime it's the South, it's all, you know, like one of the main characters, he's real, real, everybody in Texas don't talk like that. Slow down, calm down. You know? Especially in Austin, because Austin is really, yeah. a, Austin is like a LA set in Texas. It Austin really is. is. Very it's progressive. It's very like, very diverse. Yeah. There's a lot to do. It's fun. Austin is cool. It's the only Austin. place in Texas that's not Texas. And I say this about Austin, and see, Mickey is based in Austin. Austin really doesn't consider itself Texas. Nope. Nope. That's what's so Y'all are the bougiest Texans I've ever met in my life, Austin. So if that's the way yep. 911 Lone Star is crafting itself, y'all need to fire your research person. Well, there's no volcanoes that, and no, no Texas accent in Austin. Everybody sounds like they're from LA. Because everybody is from LA. Literally. <laughs> I don't know if you it's all have this. When they do something that's based in St. Louis and they'll like have a St. Louis character and they'll be like, and then I got onto the freeway. I'm like, no one in the history of St. Louis has called it a freeway. It's a highway or a road. It? Highway. What's it you called? get on the highway. Get on the highway. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like Or you say so the number funny. of it, get on forty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they they bring LA people to to you know portray the rest of the country and it never works because you get these kind of complaints from the real deal. I had a friend who long time ago applied for the position of Janet Jackson's chef. And I said to her, You don't cook. And she goes, No, but I learned. And like what? she had multiple interviews. Now we lost contact. She was a PA on the Jamie Foxx show, which meant she went and got the scripts, delivered the scripts to everybody, picked right. up people's lunch from the restaurants, like made, you know, went and told Jamie so-and-so was here to see him. Like that's what she did. So when she was like, yeah, I think I'm gonna be Janet Jackson's chef. I'm like, so, and that's the way I see it with these researchers. They go, yeah, I know Austin. Hi, everybody. How y'all doing out there in Aspen? They don't talk. Everybody, like C. Mickey said, is from L.A. And they've transplanted to Austin. There is no freeway on St. Louis. However, it is land of the walking dead. I will say that uh, in St. Louis. Assault Cert itself. Certain days. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, we was there like four. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's so I'm just saying. Mm. Well, you know what else is my... Like my location peeve because I'm originally from Louisiana. So when they profile people in Louisiana, it's even worse than Texas. 
It's always a dirt road. There are, I mean, okay. Like, there's no light, no street lights. Like, it's like, that's not real. I think in Louisiana, that. they have a lot of people getting killed. Yeah, all the shows I see that have Louisiana as the backdrop, they they usually die. Yeah. People going down yeah. the dirt road. You know what I think they miss, what they're missing is the authenticity to New Orleans. It's such a vibe there. It's a totally different culture than the rest of Louisiana. They have a different dialect. There's a different tone to try it. The whole thing. It's just a whole. But people feel like, you know, they can't understand them. So then they make everybody talk real country. Nobody talks. Wow. I don't know who we write to to change that. Cause well, I personally it would like to just be a writer on Lone Star so I can take all that out. And I'm going to tell them, don't do that. Don't do any of that. And stop coming oh, from that's downtown. Funny. All the fire departments out in the suburbs. Ain't no stop fire coming trucks from downtown. downtown. <laughs> uh, Austin is where they do South by Southwest uh, Film Festival, right? It is. Now that's a lot of fun. If you're into film and music, it's a lot of film, but they do they still have a music side as well. Like it is it's a long, wild week. And then they have another week that's for like education. That's cool. But there's that and then there's also Austin City Limits, which is a two yes. weekend in a row, three day festival. But you have to be you gotta be ready for this. This is not just any festival. Like you gotta plan to come. And like lay in the grass, get dirty. There's bugs. The food is so good, though. You will be fat when you leave. And just music okay. artists from all over the place. Like the best year for me, anyway, was Solange was on one stage. And as soon as her set was over, you had to take off running clear across the field. Because it's like, it's like on like, I don't know, 100 acres or something crazy like that run across the field to go get a spot to watch Jay-Z. Well, of course, everybody thought, you know, if Solange is here and Jay-Z is here, surely Beyonce is going to show up. She didn't. But, you know, it was a great set, though. Red Hot Chili Peppers has been through, Kendrick Lamar. Um, Culture Club. Hadn't seen Boy George in a long time. Culture Club? Yes. And he He looks really good. He came on my show. Uh, George, George, uh... George. Boy George. Now, one, Boy I couldn't George. remember his last name because there is no last name. I thought you were. So, I was like, are you just going to say his full name? Because it's definitely Boy George. You know, I'm sitting here, Chris, and I panic for a minute because I'm like, he was just on the show and I can't remember his last name. What is George's last name? And and then, like, a voice said, dumbass is Boy mm. George. <laughs> so, gosh, I panic. Boy, Boy George came on the Sherry show uh, maybe about four weeks ago. And he was absolutely amazing because he's in a Broadway show here in New York and just phenomenal. Just the nicest person. Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make me cry? What's another? Give, give me another one. Give me another. Give me another. Come, um, come, come, um, come, 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 you come and go. You come and you go. There's another one. What's too. another? He sang a, a slow one. Come on, do you Chris. Re- do you really want to hurt me? No, no there was, there was another that. slow one. It was a slow one. It was um. Come on, Chris. I'll tumble. I'll tumble for you. I'll tumble, I'll tumble for, for you. you. I'll tumble I'll for tumble. you. Oh, time. You're thinking of time. <laughs> oh, time won't give me time. Give me time. That wasn't really slow though. There was another one, right? It was like really, really slow. I thought it was no. that one. Oh my god. Love I is love. To him. I'll tumble for you. Everything I own. Let somebody love you. Church of the poison mind. Victims. Church of the poison mind. Poison mind. In the church of the poison mind. Okay, what else? That's it. We got some good ones. I think that's good. It's enough that we know. People know we know. <laughs> Culture Club with Boy George. I was a total 80s fan, man. Because in yeah, Shreveport, so I. I, where I grew up in Shreveport, we only had, you only had the black station like at certain times. 
You know, so we had, you know, we just had like the white stage. So it was a lot of 80s music, like growing up. You know, they didn't really play black music. Wild. So you got, you got the Georgia, Boy George stuff. I, I listened yeah. to that too. My favorite bands, because we moved to the suburbs of Chicago. So we were around, it was 90% white. So I started listening to, oh my gosh, Boy George and Culture Club. Uh, Toto, Chicago, uh, Phil Cindy Collins, Cindy Lauper. Like, that was all my music right there. Yeah. And when I go to Chicago, we got the, got the Earth, Wind, and Fire, as the brothers. But yeah. Music is so, so, like, when Huey Lewis came on the show today, um, it was so very, very cool he to be in his presence and i was telling c mickey before the show started huey lewis has lost 85 90 percent of his hearing so he can no longer play music anymore he can no longer hear music he is like a little a little um disc and he he can turn the volume up and it it connects to his hearing aids but he can't hear music and he was talking about the fact how devastated he was for almost a year and I mean, cause I can't even imagine, that's like somebody telling me I can't be funny and I can't tell jokes anymore. Um, yeah. I, 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 that's who I am. So he can't, but he wrote this musical and it's on Broadway now called The, pa um, the Power of Love, Heart and Soul Like The Power of Love. And it was pretty phenomenal cause they're using all of his music. So he was really great. I told him he's you know, now the sexy, he's a sexy face of hearing loss. <laughs> I said that. Okay. Okay, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah he looked at me, he's like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and at that moment, I said, don't know if that was appropriate, Sherry, but you did it. And then he was. told me it's fun. Marley Matlin, uh, Marley Matlin staring daggers at you across the room. He liked it. He liked the title. But even and though I told that him happened, if he ever got it. Huh? Even though that happened, he can feel, right? He can feel the music. Like he can feel the to music who? And stuff like that. Huey. <laughs> you just can't hear it, but he can feel it, right? The vibration. You could hear it vibrations, maybe. Beats and stuff. I don't know. He he has a very hard he it's it's affected him in a way that he can no longer perform. So even mm -hmm. if he can feel it, it's not enough. Yeah. And he said, certainly loud rock and roll music did not help, but it wasn't the cause of him losing his hearing. But whatever mm -hmm. he can feel, because I know Marley Matlin, she did Dancing with the Stars and she was able to feel the beat through the floor. So that was enough to guide her to be able to dance but I don't think it's enough whatever Huey Lewis is feeling. But he took my hands. Uh, there was a woman who was a Grammy winner. She sang The Power of Love uh, in the performance. And he took my hand and he started dancing with me. And when he came close, we came far. So he was feeling something. Oh. Something from my body was going through his body. I know he could feel it. Because he mm. said, well. you're amazing. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. He was, yeah, we know what he was talking about. We know what he was talking about. Jerry got that snatch body looking good, girl. Okay. And who am I not to send a tingle in place? I mean, who am I? <laughs> but um, I have to tell y'all, I'm a little bit disappointed right now. Emmy oh. nominations just came out. A, a sneak peek of the daytime Emmy nominations. Uh, have come out for best talk show host. I submitted, now when you're uh, going for a submission for best talk show host, you can only submit one episode to kind of show who you are as a talk show host. Now last year, we were nominated for four Emmys, one for a, a best talk show host. This year I submitted the episode that I did with Oprah. You remember that? Wow. Of my Oprah course. episode, because I thought yes. I thought that that episode really shined a light on who I am as a talk show host. Like, 
in the beginning, my topics, being with Oprah, interviewing her, playing games yeah. with Oprah, um, like giving away stuff, like just authentically, that was what, what who Sherry is. And I submitted that episode and I guess they didn't like it. I didn't get a nomination. Um, so the people who got nominated for best talk show are The View, Kelly Clarkson, The Talk, Tamron Hall, Kelly Ripa, and Mark Consuelos. Jennifer Hudson did not, Drew Barrymore did not, and Sherry Shepard didn't. I was so disappointed because I that was a really personal episode for me. But everybody doesn't doesn't know. Everybody doesn't agree with you. So no well, nomination. You know what? That's okay. Because at the end of the day, I mean, let me move over. Uh, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, you had an amazing interview. With you. Not a lot of people can say that. For me. And if I yeah, I like just, my show. If I might just back up for a second. Yes, ma'am. I was honored to, when I think about it now, it's still, it's still, it gives me goosebumps because I was on the call with you the day that you just let, you were so vulnerable about what you wanted and your dream and, you know, just how, like, there was so much passion and real, like, it was just so, it was so raw what you wanted, right? And every time I hear that voiceover, it just it just moves me, and if if you haven't seen it, you have to see it. Pull it, find it. I don't know which episode it was, but it was so moving in a lot of ways because it is literally the thing that I hold on to for my own goals, right? Of you know seeing my work produce things that I've written that I'm very passionate about that you know I want to see them come to life, and I I think about being in that moment with. And that I, that God chose me to share that moment with you. And it was such an honor. So then to watch it all come full circle, I mean, you don't need an Emmy to know that you are God's child. So. Absolutely. And I remember you were there. It was a November episode of Two Funny Mamas because I was in California. And I think I started crying because I said, I really want to talk. Like, I know. I can do this. And I've been, it's been so many notes. And I started crying. And uh, I think I got the offer for a talk show like around January, something like that, March. So I don't know. It was around there. So yeah, it is, it's very, it was very divine that you were on the call. You know, that God had you on the call as well, because that, that means something. Because I keep telling my team, like, when one person is blessed, it's not about that person receiving the blessing. It's about right. everybody being able to eat off of the blessing. Yeah. You know, so thank you for those words. I appreciate it. I'll be fine tomorrow. Tonight, I was just, I was devastated when I started getting texts and going, that's crazy. You didn't get nominated. And I was like, what? Tomorrow, I'm going to be fine because it is just like you say. See, Mickey, it's not about the Emmy. The Emmy is an acknowledgement from your peers. Sure. Um, sure. But it truly is about the people who are affected and impacted and who have a good time with the show. And honey, so let me tell you something. Everybody was affected by that Lenny Kravitz episode. <laughs> Ooh, I'm still affected. I was affected, infected, impacted. <laughs> Girl, let me tell you something. A lot. That Lenny. That, that Lenny Kravitz episode. Ooh, smells, good, it? smells good. What does he smell like? Yeah, he smells, he smells amazing. Smells good. Talks good. Feels good. Mm. Kisses good. You probably would only have a problem with Lenny Kravitz, Mickey, if you got with him. Like, this is all of that with <laughs> the fantasy of it, the lust of it. <laughs> I have a feeling, like, let's say Lenny Kravitz and I, like, went out and started dating. I think yeah. that's when I would be like, okay, you have got to take the sunglasses off. You can't go to bed in the sunglasses. Uh, do you have anything but leather? Like, is there anything in your closet? Linen, perhaps. 
cotton that breathes. Uh, I think that's when it would be. He'd probably be like, do you joke? Do you ever stop joking? Is everything a one big joke to you, yeah. Gary? So yeah. I think that's like, when Does the, he brush his stuff, teeth like this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> American woman. In leather pants. American woman. <laughs> like it probably would. I think You're probably right. The fantasy sometimes I, I is think better that's than the reality. The lust. Don't get me wrong, Mickey. It'd be a lot right of out. goings on before we got tired of all of that. <laughs> I'm at. I ain't hating. What's what's included in the goings on? The goings on. Oh, it's it's ongoing. It's ongoing. <laughs> Oh, a lot of whatever, whatever you can think and imagine, I think it would be greater. Got it. <laughs> but here's Sometimes the deal. The Lenny Kravitz is also, would you say? Sometimes the imagination is better. I mean, come on. Sometimes the imagination like, you is know, better. Like, have you ever met somebody that like you thought would be really, really amazing and then you meet them and you're like, oh my God, dude, I'm 5'3 and you're shorter than me. Yeah, sometimes you get the the reality of the fantasy, and it's not as big yeah. as the fantasy. Like for yeah. me, Lenny Kravitz, like I picture a good spoon because I just don't have the stamina <laughs> like I used to. So a good spoon with Lenny would be just amazing. Or like yeah. I picture Lenny is pretty deep. I love to talk. I have a feeling like Lenny. I don't know if he would be a good listener or if he would add to the conversation, but it'd be pretty cool to just like converse you know do all of that part of the going zones deep Chris. conversation deep conversation. deep conversation like but like it's probably deep conversation all the time you're like hey babe would you like some eggs for breakfast and he's like you know the eggs they come from a tree y'all couldn't take all that and you're like oh god <laughs> i can do all that see mickey i could it can't be so deep that i'm like <laughs> Are you going to want the eggs and the bacon or not? Like, we still have to. I've been around men who are very deep philosophical creatures. Yeah. And no matter what, they will take it apart, dissect it, tell you mm -hmm. where the verb, the pronunciation, you know, the, the, the adverb came from, what part of the mm -hmm. Hebrew, what part of the attack. Like, all of that is too much. Too much. Too much. It's just, you'll be up all night doing that kind of talking in another world. So I've been around that too. A quick note, because we are so thankful for all these great people tuned in on the live chat. Uh, I think it's important to get some messages from the people. Obviously they're on, uh, they're on here supporting you, Sherry. Uh, Alicia B letting us know the four hour episode that was on New Year's Eve 21, I believe. Yeah, 12, 30, 21, whenever you had that That's moment That's when together. I peed on myself. Was there that when some... I peed on myself? It's happened a few times, so I'm <laughs> make it three. Uh, would I tell Lenny Kravitz that before or after the goings on? You know, I'd have peed on myself before uh, Lenny. I think if it's true love, he'll find out from making you laugh. A <laughs> uh, couple, couple notes, and I'll let you two get back to it. Uh, Renisha says you couldn't handle him. <laughs> Fair, Ooh. Renisha. I'm After not dark, argue with you, Johnny Ray says you improve people's lives every day. Everybody loves the Oprah and Lenny episodes. Uh, Ms. Naughty ninety three says uh, Lenny has vintage. Okay, uh, <laughs> Jace, PR Jade, Sherry, are you still on your uh, live stream on Instagram? Did you shut that down? Oh shoot! Oh my god! <laughs> Hilarious! Thank you, PR Jade. Good looking out. Oh my gosh, I'm still on that dang on live. Oh my God, no, I think I said it there. Oh my gosh. That's the one where Lenny can see I'm on the live. He followed me. Oh, well. Geez. Oh, geez. What is going on? Oh my gosh. That's so funny. Uh, let me find this. Uh, Irina says, Sherry, you're amazing and inspiring. Uh, you're smart, you're amazing, your family, Sherry, keep your damn head up. Can't wait to afford to come to your show. Uh, Dana says, amen, talking about how you're going to move past it. HR says you won an NAACP Image Award for Best Talk Show Host, and you got renewed. Be sure to count your blessings. Uh, a lot of people not happy with the other nominees. We'll not name them. 
at the yeah, we, moment. Yeah, we, 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 we're wishing all the nominees the yes. best. They obviously submitted a great, because here's the thing. You have to submit your best uh, episode that you think is the best. So, and, and there's a, there's an impartial panel of judges who go through all of these uh, episodes and they have to view them. So nothing on them. Everybody submitted what they thought was the best. These shows have been, here's the thing. These shows are great because they've been on the air a long time which means that people are watching them because they don't keep shows on the air if the ratings are continuously bad. So these are shows that have been on the air. These are also shows that are kind of like legacy shows, which are shows that have just been on years. I think Kelly may be the newest, and she's been a winner four years in a row. So she's probably the newest. But these are shows that have been on the air. They're not, they're not new shows. So also that may have something to do with it. It's so many different reasons, but... No need to to bash other shows. I'm just grateful to be in the, on the same playing field as these shows. So, you know, next year next year I'm like I am eligible to submit the Lenny Kravitz episode. So maybe I'll submit that. I, you know, I have to look. We got to sit down and kind of me and my team have to decide what what episode is the best. Or maybe I just did a, a um, episode where I had an autistic boy on who wants to change the face of the driver's licenses by putting labels on there so that the, well you gotta go to the bathroom so that the police know that um you know you they're autistic or have some disability so that they know how to hand you know deal with uh children who are on the spectrum or teenagers or young adults that might be the one that's a good one because they gave a very heartfelt story and he talked about the fact that he was bullied before and he knows that God did not make a mistake with him. So that might be the episode that I submit for next year. So I don't know, but also it doesn't take, I'm so thankful for the blessings. I'm thankful for my NAACP Image Award. I'm thankful that we got renewed for three seasons, but I'm also human. So like I said, I'll be fine tomorrow, but sometimes you gotta take, I think that people who say, uh, it's okay, it'll be all right. You like sometimes you're gonna take a time to a little mourn. If you don't get an audition, sure. you don't. You know how you felt. Like Mickey, you and Kim are pitching uh, the mo one of the most beautiful projects about a little African girl who was kidnapped. She was like a queen, a little princess in Africa, because this is true. And she was kidnapped and sold into slavery. And how she managed to keep her joy and her spirit and resiliency. And it's an animated. Um, cartoon and it's so beautiful you guys are going around pitching it to hollywood and you you you, have, you and kim have put your heart and soul into pitching this little ashanti princess and you know sometimes you get a no and you're looking at them going why can't you see what we see i see sherry sees what you see because i've seen it and i've seen the the incarnations and the evolution of this little ashanti princess and it just takes the right person to believe in you but gosh when you walk out that room and you know you've done well in the pitch, and then it's a no, it's still her, it still stings. You know you're an amazing writer. Kim knows she's an amazing, you know, writer. You guys have developed something very special, and it will get played. It will, somebody is going to pick it up. But just being human, I think that's just a human emotion. We wanna be picked, we wanna be liked. Then we, then we get over and we keep going, because that's what resilience. Absolutely. It. And that you have to in this business, you have to be able to keep on pushing. But you're absolutely right. You know, like we've had sessions where we've had executives in tears just from us telling the story. And then, you know, one reason or another, you don't, you never really know why, right? Um, but then you have to sit with that, and then you got to get over it. And you got to pick yourself up. You got to get to the next one and still give. A hundred percent the same way you did before, you know, so absolutely it's, big, it's such a lesson. And I think you give you're you're such an example of that lesson for me in my life, because I'm always like, OK, Sherry got <laughs> Sherry got where she wanted. And so God is that God, God doesn't love Sherry more than he loves me, you know, like, <laughs> but you get into your absolutely. head. Absolutely. Can, can you get closer to the mic? I'm. Come closer. Okay. <laughs> start start poking around. We'll help you. Is this it? Yep. 
That's it. Yep. Oh. <laughs> that would be this thing that's way in the back. Well, welcome to welcome to Whitley Studios. Welcome to Whitley Studio, where the microphone is all the way in the back. Found it. But it's so true. Is that better? God doesn't Much. love anyone. Thank you. He doesn't love anyone more than he loves anyone. And yeah. I tell people to hold on to me because it took a long time for it to happen for me in this genre that I've wanted since I was 23. And I'm, I'm going to be 57 mm. in next week. So it took a minute to happen. I think he had to um, season me up. And I think he had to, oh, yeah. it had to be some toughness put up under here because there's battles all oh, yeah. the time. With, with talk shows, just for, the, for a talk show to stay on the air, you know, three seasons is a miracle. So, yeah, hang on, hang on to my testimony. But, you, you know, sometimes you get a disappointment. You want to go to a bar and have a drink. For me, what I'm fighting off now, because I get in this, you know, like, wow, do they not like me? Do they not? And I know that's not true. Like I said, I will be fine right. tomorrow. But especially because it's also close to my birthday. So I'm very emotional. I'm very emotional going through this getting older, um, trying to keep it together. I went into the gym this morning. When I tell you every bone in my body hurts, mm. everything. Mm. And then, but my trainer said, Sherry's not, you got, everything is inflamed because you've been on the road for three weeks eating bad food. You've been eating at restaurants, it's loaded with mm. salt. You've been eating unsweet nice tea with tons of Splenda. That's not good for you. You've been, so uh, your body is, is, is inflammation. So I got that going on, trying to push through, emotional in that aspect. Um, mm -hmm. You know, dealing with uh, getting to a certain age and everybody has been going, this will be a nice birthday present, the nomination. And, and it didn't come. So I'm so, I'm grateful despite being, you know, to be here. But this is why God gave it to me now. One of the reasons, because of the resiliency. I'm not going to go go to a bar and get drunk. I really want some chocolate chip cookies that I'm fighting off. That's my <laughs> thing. It's not, it's not liquor. It's insomnia cookies, which stay open 24 hours. They have chocolate chips and oatmeal raisin. Nice and hot and, and melted. And bluebell ice cream. And bluebell ice cream and pink berry and chocolate cake. Linda's fudge cake from Cheesecake Factory. Those all are my stress relievers. And I'm going, I'm not going to go to a stress reliever because I'm going to feel worse if I ate it. It'll, it'll take care of it for 30 seconds and then I'm going to feel worse because tomorrow I got to deal with the residual of that. So, yeah. you know, as a writer, I think I, ha I think I had to, I, ha I know I had to get better as a writer, right? Even though I've been doing it, I knew I wanted to be a writer when I was in eighth grade. Like I knew I was always yeah. very clear on what I wanted to do, but you know, life had other decisions for me and that's cool. I like, I wouldn't change a thing, you know, but it is, it is hard getting older and you have a birthday tick around and then a major birthday tick around, you know, and then you sort of, you know, you got to keep talking yourself up about yeah. this, this, I know this is my gift. I don't doubt that for one second. Now, how yeah. that gift is supposed to be shared with the world is different because, you know, I have a lot of different ways that I know I've impacted people in their life. And so if that's what God has placed me for, then, OK, I, I'll go with that. But what I'd really like is to see my work produced. You know, I don't it's and it's not about one specific project. The thing about writer and i tell people who say oh i want to write a story well it's not about writing one story right you've got to have i have a whole production company of material from one end to the next um because you never know what that next conversation is going to be exactly. or who that next person is going to be that says you know what i'm really looking for you know We've been in spaces and somebody will say to Kim, you know what I'm looking for? I'm looking for a writer, you know, and she'll say, oh, here's one right here, you know, but then Absolutely. They, go, they go do something else or they change the mind. All kinds of stuff can happen, but you just got to like stay the course, be true to yourself, know who you are, what you want to do and be good are. with that, you know? So I know who I am and I'm good with that, but a lot of people really struggle with that. So don't struggle. But Keep you going. said it. You said the one thing, like, you have to know who you are. 
You have to know, uh, believe in that. No matter mm -hmm. what it looks like, you got to believe in that. And you got to just stay the course. You have to say, wait, hold on one second. My son is coming in. Jeffrey, can you take Lexi all the way down to th the basement? That's level. Um, let me see. Hold, hold on, y'all, one second. Parlor, Sherry, bedroom, G. It's G. Take it to Lexi, get up and get on that elevator. Get up. Y'all, we were so deep. We were so deep. There she goes. Take her to G. And you got to close the gate all the way. Okay. How old is Jeffrey? That's my kid. I, when I tell you, I'm more in love with that boy every day. The, the older he gets, the more he pulls away on his independent level. I just fall in love with my kid. I, do you ever feel like this, Mickey, with your two? You have one who's in the Navy and your other son, um, I forgot what he's doing. I forgot what he's doing. Nothing. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Wasn't going to go there. Wasn't oh, going to okay. go there. No, I'm going to tell you what. Let me tell you something. Let me help you parents out there. It's okay. Right? Because I know the foundation I put in my boys that we, my husband and I put, I know the foundation we put in them. So right now, he is figuring it out. He yes. is on a path and a journey that I didn't create, but I know that God created for him. So it's not for me to be upset because he's not going the way that I wanted him to go. There's a different path for him. So I'm okay with it. Right now, it just looks like nothing. That's what it looks you like. Are... That's what it feels like. You are such a great mother. Hello. <laughs> you know, when I get these calls where people hang up with me, remember when you was, go back 30 years ago, when you would get a phone call and, and somebody, and you go, hello, and it was nothing but breathing. You'd be like, bitch, I know who you are. Stop calling. Nobody. Star 69. Star 69. I'm Who's calling you star back. 69? Exactly. It was. It was star 69. I'll call you back. Want to call and breathe on the phone, and mm -hmm. you and you be mm -hmm. like, "Bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> I keep calling me and freaking hanging up. But I want to get back to you. You you've always been such an incredible mother, and and you have just you love your sons. You've gone through it for your sons. It, it's just like you've always. It's just been a journey with you and the boys, which is a journey for yeah. every parent. Um, mm -hmm. I just love that you be transparent and say. It's okay because sometimes you create a foundation, you have a plan, they veer way off, and you gotta way accept. Way off. Way, way off. You you just gotta accept Ooh. that this is, you know, you hope. I used to always pray for my son, you tell me. I would pray, God, keep my son on a short leash that when you have to correct him, he comes back. Like he, he don't, he's not so far out there that you gotta, you know, you gotta pull that, chain for him to come back that he's on a short leash to, she leash that when you got to correct him he'll come back quickly yeah. i don't know um i'm at that, that thing mickey your kids are out of the house yeah. for in me i world. feel like they're in the world and they're living i feel like with jeffrey especially because he got a misdiagnosis of um autism at a very late age mm -hmm. i was told for many years it was uh, developmental delays and then we got the autism diagnosis like at 16, you know? So mm -hmm. I am I am with the boy who's going through hormones, who's going through things that he's just like, I'm not like them. I'm not autistic. That's not the label I'm going to carry. It's not, mm -hmm. yes, I know my, bra my brain processes differently, but not like he sees autism as like nonverbal and making a lot of noises because everybody on the spectrum is different. Jeffrey has more Asperger's, but... Mm -hmm. It worries me sometimes because I say to him, you know, Jeffrey, because he looks like he's 23 now, muscles, sideburns. And I say, Jeffrey, if the police ever stop you or say anything to you, you say, I am on the spectrum, uh, the autism spectrum. I'm just trying to get home to my mom. Can you please call my mom? And I said, if you won't say mommy, that probably will work even work better. 
Uh, if your phone dies, I need you to tell people when you ask for directions, can you point me to a cell phone store because I'm on the spectrum and I need to call my mom. And he says, I'm not saying any of that because I'm not on the spectrum. And I'm not going to say I'm autistic. I'm not going. And it's that that scares me a lot because at least he's got three seconds extra, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like every time with G with Jeffrey, the closer he's he's going to be 19. We have the same birthday, so he's going to be 19. And I feel like I got 10 years worth of life to teach him in two days yeah. and i can't possibly teach him everything that i need him to know most of it is being a young man you know jeffrey we are in a brownstone on a major street and now here in new york people sit on your brownstones so you can come by mickey and there'll be two dudes sitting on your brownstones in my other brownstone they was gonna shoot up <laughs> they were gonna shoot up so lexi came out there with her ass 134 pound and everybody left. Right. Right. yeah everybody left that brownstone um now they didn't know that lexi got arthritis and osteoporosis and they didn't if they'd have looked at her tail they'd have seen it wagging happily she wasn't about to bite no anybody i said where's all the kills that i bought i paid all this money you be killing people you come out their tail just like, <laughs> they didn't all it <clears throat> she looked like she gonna kill you but um she does here <clears throat> Here, I've seen, you know, there was a dude on my brown, so I'm talking to his girlfriend. They know somebody changing his damn clothes. Then if somebody comes at two in the morning, just sits on the stool, he's thrown up. It's crazy. Mm. So I said to myself, I have to, I got to teach Jeffrey that if he ever comes home off the Uber from school and he sees anybody, any dudes, any men sitting on this, this my, my stoop, because Jeffrey will say, excuse me, and walk right up the stairs and press in his little number. And they could see that he's going very slow. Anybody could, he's, he just doesn't, like he don't look around when he's walking. Yeah. In New York, I'm always looking around. That's why I can ride the train so freely. Cause you, I be looking. Jeffrey doesn't, he doesn't have that awareness. And so I have to teach him, you know, if you see somebody on the stoop uh, that you don't know, keep walking to the Dunkin' Donuts and call me, call my assistant Edie. I got five numbers for him to call to send his phone. Mm -hmm. So it's just like those- Has he done things. it? Has he done it? He's not done it because there's nobody that has been on the stoop. Okay. Apparently, I only get them. Well. <laughs> Jeffrey doesn't get them. But um, I have to tell him, you know, he loses yeah. his key all the time. So Jeffrey loses key in front of the door. So it's that <laughs> kind of thing. Like, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate but you, you know being what? so vulnerable. It's not, you know what, though? I, it's just different. You just have different scenarios with Jeffrey. This, the, it's, it's, we're all going through the same thing. So my 19 year old, mm. the one who he's in the Navy, he's being, he's become super responsible, which is great. If any of you do remember any of me talking about, this is my wild child who you know, set the tree on fire, got kicked out of every after school program there ever was, stole kind of all kinds of money, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, well, when he joined, I w and I was really surprised that he made that decision, but I was very proud of him. My husband was Navy, was Navy, so shocking, but not shocking, but a little bit. I really thought he would go off to college. But anyway, you know, he called us one day. <laughs> he called me about 1030 at night. This is the call. Mom, I'm okay. The car is not. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, where are you? He said, it's raining. The car is gone. Okay, the car is not okay, or the car is gone. So it's two very different <laughs> what? things. What? Oh my god! He says, "Well, I wrecked the car," and so of course he's in Virginia, and I'm thinking to myself, "Is he delirious? Does he is he aware of where he's at? Is he like all the things are going through my head?" And I'm trying to be calm, right? So I'm like, "Okay, are you okay? Are you bleeding? Touch your head." Then he's like, "I'm fine. I'm fine." But the car, the car is gone, and so I was like, "It's okay." So fast forward, he wants to come home. He had been really, really excited about coming home for like a short period of time and come to find out that he had this desire to go see some little girl, some little mm -hmm. whatever somewhere mm -hmm. like two hours away. 
So he was like, you know, can I borrow the car? And at this point, you wrecked the car. So no, you can't borrow our car because we have good, great cars and you tow up the car you had. So we're like, no. But he's determined. He's so determined that he's like, I'm going to fly to Houston and go see this little girl. And then I'm going to drive. And then I'm going to take the bus. And I'm like, this is a lot for like, I mean, I get what you're trying to get. Right. But like, is this necessary? But sometimes if you don't know the plan, this is what this mm-hmm. is what I can tell you for sure. God knows the plan. So mm-hmm. he he is on the phone with the insurance company and my husband talking about, you know, trying to give all the information about like the car and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, no. <laughs> he, he drops the wallet, his wallet, and it falls between a slat that's like this big, like <sighs> perfectly down. And his whole wallet goes into the ocean. Gone. Oh, my gosh. Now, what's bad about that is because he's on a ship, he can't get off the ship if he doesn't have ID. And so now he's really mad. He's like, oh, I really wanted to come home. Mom, Dad, can you buy me a ticket? Because I really want to go to Houston. And we're like, I'm like, but I can't get you off the boat. Like, there's nothing I can do, right? I said, well, go so, you know, go to the office people, maybe office people. Ask them for another ID. He goes and he asked them and they said, nope, because you are lost one. We're not going to give you another one for 30 days. And I so said, he had lost one said, before. He had lost, one, he had before. lost one before. He lost oh. one before. And I said, son, I don't know what it is about this trip, but you ain't supposed to do it. You just ain't supposed to do it. You just, you got to sit down. Whatever you had planned ain't going to happen. Did y'all mm. talk about the Uber driver that got killed? Did y'all talk what? about the Uber driver that got killed? That's what I want to know. Who what is, is that? she talking about? Who is that? This? Is that a what? But okay. is that Kim Whitley's she music? Said, you know, at the Amazing. last lady and the man shot her. She the Uber driver. Because yeah. I send my wigs all the time in the package. It's crazy. First wigs of all, in a package you know, what happened, Chris? Tell Sherry. We we don't. It was the that's lady. Not what we talk about on the podcast first of all she gone now second of all <laughs> you're not supposed to be anywhere in the office she's now gone. we got to deal with where's kill why she can't come on we don't know we, i i don't know what's happening third of all it was a really great story that i was so into <laughs> <laughs> uh, now everybody's like where's kim what's what's going on over there She's Josina so Cardwell brother, says Kim Rasquire says Kim Ramon yeah, exactly. says she's alive. Oh wait, Ramon says hey Kim. Ms. Naughty says she's alive. Kiana Maria is saying, Oh my god. Pac 93, hey Kim. <laughs> MM this says, what, what in the this- Charlie's Angels am I hearing? <laughs> Deletha, <laughs> loving it. Hi, Kim Whitley, my best friend, Adrian. Uh Kim Shania, she came upset. out of nowhere. <laughs> She has enti- upset the entire ecosystem of Two Funny Mamas tonight because we've already we've here's the, here's the deal we Kim can't come on the podcast for busy running Kim. around. Well, obviously she's not because you didn't hurt her. So we <laughs> Mickey. We look forward to I'm having Kim back on. I'm gonna kill that girl. Um. See me, two questions, two questions. Our three, Sherry, statement first. You did say you wanted to, you were, I'm, I'm worried you're just going to hit a wall and jump off. And we've got pictures, some videos, recap stuff to get to from, uh, from your Baltimore trip. See Mickey, second, did you finish your story? Yeah, it's over. There was some other stuff that she was saying that was, I thought it was really, Beautiful. very cool. It was she wonderful. Said, she said to her child, over. you're not supposed to go on the ship because... It, it came back to, you may not know the plans that you have for your child, but God does. Thank you, Sherry. That was the point and of the story. To the, take it to the mountain. And your son, it went round and round. And, hey, let me tell you, that's so funny. A boy will go move heavens and earth to Listen. get with a girl. And as they get older, they will drive across three states if a girl call and go, I'm sitting here waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. So 
Listen, I remember, I will never forget a friend of mine in high school. He told me this. He said, if a, if a, if a boy has to take your trash out from your mama and your grandmama's house every day for three weeks, because he know at the end of them three weeks, he going to get it. He going to take that trash out. I never forget He going to take that trash out. <laughs> and so when he was so insistent, I mean, I knew what was happening. I mean, come on, you know, but I'm, I'm also a very open mom in that sense. And I was like, listen, wrap it up. Don't name it, claim it till mama can DNA <laughs> it. That has been my philosophy <laughs> always, right? Because okay. I'm not, we're just not doing that. Don't name so, it, I mean, don't I claim got it, it till mama can DNA it. Listen, don't be out here with just wilding, okay? So I understood, but, and I wasn't, the, the crazy part is because he's been so responsible, I really wasn't trying to stop him from doing anything. Because to me, I'm like, you're an adult. You've got to deal with your own consequences. We're here for support. If you want to talk about it, if you don't want to talk about it, cool. But I wasn't trying to stop him. But I was like, you have, you must have to be stopped. You have to be stopped. So, you know, right now I'm batting 50-50. One is crushing life game. You know, does he make mistakes? Sure, we all do. He's going to make mistakes forever, whatever. The other one is just going in a different direction to right. But he's going gonna, he's gonna to come together. You watch. You know what's incredible about my oldest son, though? That he, he can sing. And I didn't, I'm, I, I feel bad because him growing up, I didn't know it. He never sang. And you didn't nurture that, huh? I did, and, I did, and I would have had I known. But I'm not kidding you. I'm not. I'm not. Kidding. He sounds just like John Legend, and he wow. Think, he sounds just like John Legend. I wish I could record him, but he he won't. He he won't sing around me. But the way mm-hmm. I uncovered it was remember the new edition story. Yes, when that came out, that sparked something in him, and I think he was probably about like. 15 or 16, that sparked something in him because he saw little brown boys singing. We watched the whole thing like three times and he started singing new edition songs. I'm on the floor like, what is happening? So by the time I recognized and was like, do you want to get a singing coach? Do you want to take piano lessons? Like, what do you want to do? He was like, mom, you're always doing too much. Like, I just like to sing a little bit. And I'm like, no, we could go on American Idol. He's like, no, (laughs) like I'm not... (laughs) Like you could be number one. He's like, I just, but his voice is so beautiful. And I recently actually did hear him, uh, but I didn't have my phone on me. But I was like, I have got to record him, or I hope to be able to record him one day so he can hear how how beautiful. And just so there's a purpose, there's a reason. So look, if your kids are going astray, just pray that they don't go too far. It is what it is. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Thank you for that. I love your stories of it just will be okay. You just got to trust. It'll just be okay. That. Yeah. Just got to trust. Little little problems, big people, big problems. It's it's very interesting. I go through the, I go through the mother guilt of like not knowing, like with him being diagnosed. Mm. Ah, and I try not to look back in the past or overthink, but sometimes it just hits me. Like I'm playing, I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. Because mm-hmm. he's 18 and doesn't want to have anything to do with me, but he does a little bit. But mostly he does. He's an 18-year-old. And I feel like this is the time I need to be around him nonstop going, you know. Yeah. And But it's like, it is what it is. God knew. Yeah. God knew this. Um, and so I have to deal with what it is now. So now, like, we, I was at a conference today. I ran from work, tired as heck to go to this conference to meet with the alumni of the school that he goes to, of the kids that have graduated, because trying to figure out what is going to be next for Jeffrey, because he's 19, yeah. he'll be graduating. And they was just telling me all this stuff, and so they were asking me questions. Does he have a, does he have a F1? Does he have a PPP? Does he have an OPW? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. They were looking at me like, what do you know about your son? I was like, I don't know much. <laughs> Cause I'm tired and my memory's bad and I do stand up and I'm an actress and I run a talk show and I'm really busy and he likes playing video games all day. And I don't, and they were like, well, what is he like? I'm like, uh, nothing but playing video games, 
all day, not very academic, Um, really talks about girls a lot. Uh, don't know if, what about his social security? Have you gotten a social security payments? Uh, haven't started that yet. Uh, wait a minute, haven't filled out that form. Don't know what that is. Don't know what assessments he's had. Uh, feeling kind of <laughs> inadequate here. <laughs> I know it was like, <laughs> but you look good. Well, what do you do? Yeah. What do you no, do? No, we all feel you know, like that. All these parents were talking about, they were like, you know, we should get together and we should sue the state of New York because they're denying services to kids with special needs. And so and so, Janie's gonna get a she's gonna buy a brownstone with six bedrooms and put in six different kids with a counselor. And then all the parents and we're gonna pull up. And I was like, Oh, oh, I should be buying something for Jeffrey to live in. What? <laughs> I was like, I'm such an inadequate mother. I was like, Can I get some more grapes and cheese? That that'll calm me down. <laughs> Listen, we all, all moms start feeling inadequate about something. Like you think about these things as you're like, did I miss that? Did I miss this lesson? You know, you get overwhelmed as they get to be adults because you're like, they're out in the world. Do they know like how to, you know, do they know how to say no? Do they, do they have stranger danger vibes anymore? Or does that go away by the time they're eight? Like, you know, do they know how to like wash their armpit are, are they brushing their teeth every day because you know i paid a lot of money for that boy to have braces in his mouth and to get his teeth straight i'm telling and you i really never had braces he, for he's so not long. brushing his teeth oh that's gonna burn me <laughs> i'm more upset about the teeth i think than him ruining his life oh my gosh i, I got jeffrey's bands he's supposed to wear bands on his braces he's oh, just yeah. starting out. and the dentist keep telling me He's supposed to have been using these like four years ago. And I go, well, I forgot <laughs> to get them for you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you give me the can you give me the bands now and we'll start? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Like, Look, I listen, I'm wearing Invisalign, but I had to take them out because I talk funny with them in, so I took them out. But I have my Invisalign to keep my teeth straight because they were going awry. But I can't keep tell you about here, so I don't lose them. What? Well, that's a good place. I have lost. Yeah, you won't lose I've them. Never got the tra- I have never, I've been on Invisalign for the last three years. I've never gotten past <laughs> tray three because I keep, I will lose Invisalign as soon as I put, pull them off my teeth because they get thrown away with the regular, uh, if I'm at a restaurant. I've never gotten past tray three. We always got to start, like, I, mm. now I got another gap in my teeth because I've lost my Invisalign six weeks ago. And I'm about to, and they keep going, can we just put braces on the back? And I go, no, we have to do Invisalign. No. But that's a good place to put them inside your, well, now I don't wear a bra no more because of my reduction. So nothing is going to hold it. Well, I mean, <sighs> you got something between your skin, you know, put, I don't know, put, put them on you. I, I, I don't put them down on a paper towel because they're white, it's clear, they're going to get thrown away. That's why I keep putting them down so, on a paper towel. Never a paper towel. Rule number one. So I, my teeth were actually straight growing up. What happened was, as you get older, FYI, yes. y'all, you get older, your bone, you start to like lose bone and like your jaw and all that's weird stuff. So the bottom teeth were starting to like come together and have a meeting. Yeah. I don't know what they were meeting about, but I didn't want them to meet anymore. And then the <laughs> front two were like, you know what your teeth you were know, meeting about? To- your teeth was mean. They was like, where are we going to go? You ready to You ready to get up out of here? <laughs> right. Literally. Because then all of a sudden I was like, <laughs> and I was like, that's not cute. And I'm too cute for my teeth to be going this way and that way all at the same time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I got the Invisalign and I'm, a, but I'm a rule follower. So they were like, you have to wear them 22 hours of the day. I'm like, damn, that's only two hours to eat. I better eat fast. <laughs> so I have, I have, lo- <laughs> I've lost like six pounds because you can't snack all the time. You can't you just understand? like go get some chips. They told me I need to wear mine between 20 and 22 hours a day. If I kept them suckers on for nine hours, we was lucky. The <laughs> most I wore them is when I went to bed. I was like, you will not stop me from eating invisible. <laughs> Okay, I took the, that's why they was always getting thrown away at restaurants. Because every time I was eating and putting them in white paper towel next to my plate, I went in the garbage one time looking for my Invisalign. 
girl in oh, 2022. No, mine. Who got 20, 22 hours in a day be wearing some damn fake braces? I take them out. Braces. I stick them in my boot. I eat my food. I floss. And then I put them back in. So in like three months, my shit. Oh, sorry. It was straight. I was straight. <laughs> they look really good. They look very I good. Know, right? Yeah. Mine are kind of straight, but I got it like a, I can, it's like a gap into my teeth. They always disappear week three, but then that's when I usually end up losing the trays. And they even did it too. They, they do work. Invisalign work. I love them. They've even did me now, see, Mickey, because I lose them so much because, you know, you train, trade, you uh, put a new tray in every week. Mm-hmm. I put a new tray in every two days. That way, if I lose the tray from Monday, the tray from Wednesday is not that far away from what Mondays looks like. So I change my trays every two to three days just so I can wow. keep up. Yeah, that's how bad it's gotten. They tra- literally, and then this last time, they, the doctor, the, my orthodontist, he was like, let me yeah. just give you my cell phone number. We gonna exchange numbers. <laughs> you gonna call me every time you take them out and I'm gonna call you to make sure you put them in. That's how much, how bad it is with this Invisalign treatment. He just texted me the other day. He said, Sherry, can I just see? He begging me like a boyfriend. Can I just see you? You, you well, Let's do this again. So we're going to try it again. I'm going to put it in my shirt, which I'm going to lose because I don't have the breasts that I did. They're going to fall right past my boobies. But I'm going to try something a little. Maybe I'll, I'm going to try but a little They might something. stop somewhere. You know, you could like stick them in your shoulder and your pants or something. Just put them on your body. That way, just by the time you body. leave the restaurant or whatever, you can just plop them right on back in. I had something very nasty, a very nasty, nasty comment. And I'm not going to say it because it's so wild and nasty. Well, now you've got to say it. I want to hear no, it. No, I can't say it. It's, I'll tell you. Okay, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's hysterical funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it, girl, because that's all I need is TMZ picking up that comment I made with respect to Lenny Kravitz and uh. Invisalign falling somewhere. So let me just drop it. Uh, that's really funny. Your teeth look amazing. Um, I think that you have to come back next week when we do our podcast. Hey, Chris, were there any comments? Does anybody want to see me back? So many comments. Uh, yes, everybody's definitely. loving it, um, and we may have a surprise for you. We're over eighty thousand subscribers officially. That's exciting. Yay. Things Whoa. are things are moving along, and we're uh, we're doing it the right way. Uh, a lot of people uh, excited about the depth of the conversation, uh, Johnny Ray. I feel like we've really gone a lot of places tonight. Covered a lot of ground. Kim's a prisoner, mo- uh, motherhood, <laughs> and a tooth alignment. Uh, other comments, um, Seabreeze40 says you can't take the trays out when you see a sexy man. Raphael just had a couple teeth removed a couple weeks ago. Rasquire says hashtag free Kim. Uh, <laughs> we got uh, some people answering C. Mickey. Cheryl says come back. Kim Graham says come on back. Says uh, everybody's having a good time with C. Mickey. Um, yeah, so, oh, here. Um, definitely want to see you back from Lakeisha as well. Y'all. Sherry, are you, um, what's happening on your show this week? Uh, Huey Lewis uh, is on. Um, oh, my gosh. I, you you can't ask me that. You got to look it up. I don't. Like, I don't. Huey Lewis is on Friday. Oh, today is Thursday. Now, wonder. I'm like, I don't remember the guest. That's because today is Thursday <laughs> and tomorrow's Friday. Y'all, y'all not going to make me think I'm crazy. Fair. That, That's fair. That panic for a moment. I told you I'm already in motion on my birthday coming up. Now, the fact that I can't remember stuff is really messing with my head. So that was an unfair question. What's coming up this week? You don't like me. Cause today is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. That's you don't you don't like me. Huey Lewis is coming up this week. You saying I don't like? like oh, oh, I was uh, to break the fourth wall. I was oh, uh, I was trying to lob something to you to waste some time so you wouldn't have to talk to me for a second. Just well, just let me for tell a second. You, I will and I've got a surprise you. for you. So 
I will tell you this, uh, I'm, May 11th, Mother's Day, I'm going to be in Syracuse, New York at the Landmark Theater with Joe. Joe who sings, I Wanna Know How to Turn You On, and he sings, mm -hmm. uh, he sings some other stuff too, Joe. Uh, Get it in a broken glass. What's no 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 no? I think that's Joe. Uh, and then he sings. Um, it's gonna go away from me, but uh, we are on the love and laughter, kicking off. We're gonna see how it goes and see if we are going to tour together, Joe and me. But we are at the Landmark Theater in Syracuse, New York, May 11th on Mother's Day. So I'm going to make you laugh. Joe's going to ask you what turns you on. And then we'll go from there. So <laughs> please let us see if you can get tickets at SherryShowTV.com. And I will be at, oh, I'm going to be. You want to see this? Yeah. Okay, okay, so my next comedy show, y'all, you want to know where I'm going to be next? I'm going to be with Joe on our Love and Laughter Tour in Syracuse, New York, May 11th. That was a five, that hey. show was sold out. Five sold out shows in Baltimore, which brings us to our, our next guest. Five sold out shows in Baltimore. It was packed. The show started at six, people were there at five o'clock. They have fulfilled their two drink minimum by 5.30. Can I tell you? Oh. Um, it was amazing. We did two shows each night and then we added a fifth show on Sunday. And then I had to get on a train and come back to be back at work on Monday. But this brings us to our next guest, which is Andre Lavelle. Because did he leave and go home, Mickey? I mean, I guess. I don't know. No, he's still Let's there. If you just at. give it if you just give him a holler. Can you call oh, Andre so and I'm out. But don't dis don't disappear like because you gotta come back. Well, and also we've got uh just just Was tell Andre to come in. Yeah, tell Andre to come I, in. Was I gotta go get him. So hold Hold on, hold on. Well, what in the world? Uh, I wanted to find out Andre! the other. <laughs> that's not your son, C. Mickey. I know. Uh, tell you what, while we wait for uh, Andre and uh, and everybody Stop. else, how about a surprise, Sherry? What? Give me a surprise. Oh, hey, what's happening? Why do you sound like Santa Claus? I didn't say, hey, what's happening? Hey, that's George. Look, it's George Wallace. What's Good up? morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> you can catch surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> You can catch George in St. Louis at Helium Comedy Club with Marsha Warfield all weekend long. And you know what? George has made it in just to hang out with you all. Sherry, Andre, George Wallace. George Wallace. Let me turn my hat around so I can look like you. Yeah, there you go, man. Yeah. There you go. How about that? Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Hello, Andre. What's happening? Oh, George, we miss you. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Thank you so much. I just thought I would call in to say hello and it's just to surprise you. So you're at the Helium Comedy Club in surprise. St. Louis with Marsha Warfield? <laughs> yeah, we're having fun here. We start tomorrow night and Saturday night, 7 o'clock and 9.30. So they can get the tickets by going to the Helium Comedy Club website, right? Exactly. Just that, you know, 7 to 9.30, some of the shows are sold out. But get any ticket you can, you know, let's have some fun. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to see you, George. You look amazing. Uh, the same thing you got. You look good. Though. I'm over here actually trying to push J. Anthony Brown's mamas to the arch, and I can't get it through. <laughs> you still on J. Anthony Brown's mama. He's on me every day. I try to stop it, but he keeps talking about my mama every day. And so I have to get him on this one, you know? Um, we're trying to get her through, but she won't fit. She just, I put Vaseline on her. I put <laughs> WD-40, but we can't get her through. All we can hear is, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sherry, are you coming on the ship with us this year? Kim is coming on the ship, but I got to do my talk show. It's, that's, it takes place right. at the same time. But Kim Whitley will. I will be there with you. Okay, Andre, we're going to have a good time. We'll have fun for Sherry. But thank you so much. I, I just wanted to say to hello to let y'all know we love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. <laughs> George Wallace, everybody. We love you, George Wallace. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, George. <laughs> the Helium Comedy Club this weekend, y'all. <laughs> e
Can you believe it? Marsha War Warfield from Night Court and George Wallace. Oh my gosh, it's a two. Wow, that's gonna be like a show. Oh, they've been killing it for a while now. Uh, when he had his uh, spot in Vegas, they do shows together. Really? Wow. Yeah. I would. That's, so, a, show that's that a that's a ticket right there. Yeah, I would. I would love to see that show. Is uh, he and he and Marshall. Marsh is a beast, and George, you know how he get down. So it's gonna be. Oh yeah, both of them. Thing. And they both so funky. I love them. Wow, what a what a great. That's why you, that's why you'll tune in to Two Funny Mamas if you do a, a surprise live stream at uh, ten central on a Thursday night. George Wallace might stop by. That's why you stay tuned in. And thanks to the six hundred oh. people watching. Thank there you is. so much, six hundred people. I wanted Andre. Where to are Andre you in a came. warehouse? What? Where, where are you? I'm in my office. Your office? Yeah, I'm in my office. What's all that behind you? Shoes. Shoes in your office. Yes, because they wouldn't fit in my closet. But there was the lady, the lady here uh, who owned this brownstone was an author. So mm. guess what she had on all of these shelves? She had books. Well, I'm not an author. So I write comedy, but I, I don't, I'm not an author. So my little two books that I wrote. Me, I put the shoes there. All, all, all of those are your shoes. You only had two well, pairs. So, you only got two feet. <laughs> I'm a girl, Andre. I'm not good. You working on your clean set? Little foot humor there, buddy. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you killed it with the clean material, as Sherry uh, told everyone that there were stipulations. She wanted to surprise your mother under one stipulation. Sherry, how do you yeah, feel the clean. weekend went? I think Andre did extremely well. He, the crowd loved him. Um, he was really good. He just, and he was, he really added a lot of value to my team. Well, thank you. He was very personable. Everybody really liked him. He got on the stage. You know. Was, huh? Look at that guy. He look almost buff. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it back together. I'm trying to get rid of that little bump right at the bottom, that little fat part right at the bottom of the stomach. I'm trying to get hey, rid of that. Go with a sport coat. That's look how that I lose crowd. weight. That's how I lose weight, Andre. You just go with a sport coat. Just put the, the sport, sport coat. coat. He did. He wore a blazer one time, but that crowd was on fire. Oh, my God. Amazing. Awesome. They were amazing. They were sold out. Was sold out. They you came out for you. They came out. Hey, there's my mama. Mom had come to the show. <laughs> 76 and years old. Came to the 9 o'clock show. Drove. <laughs> how many hours wow. did they drive? An hour and a half. They drove an hour and a half to get to the show. They loved Andre. She was so surprised when you walked out on stage. Look at this. Yeah, that's Look my mom them. and her clique. That's, 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 her, that's the Golden Girls right there. The, De the Deacon yeah. Slayers. Yeah. <laughs> Laid them yeah. down. They came out strong. And she was so surprised when you walked out. I, I That made me feel good. And she was happy you gave her the VIP treatment. They went all backstage. You got their love on with you, you know? <laughs> oh, like, my okay, gosh. They were, so, they were so wonderful. It was a pleasure to uh, have them be my guests. I, I and you appreciate were great you too. so Andre much. was really good, y'all. He didn't go home with nobody. I just knew that was going <laughs> who do we have here oh, this, you know who this is this is rain Pryor, richard Pryor's daughter she was so wonderful she came out and i was so honored to meet rain Pryor because rain Pryor is also a comedic actress and she used to be in um andre we bet money on it look at andre rain yeah, i Pryor, paid my rain debt Pryor. i paid did you get the money did you get it kevin is gonna mail me a check he said he was mailing me a check uh. So and he will. He's good for his work. Uh, Kevin's my road manager. But <laughs> Rain Pryor was not in Saved by the Bell. He was in Head of the Class. Right. I, I got. I knew it was a school show. I got it mixed up. I thought I was going to get that money, too. I was so confident. Like, I know what it is. <laughs> and I lost. $50. Andre swore up and down. He knew it. He was wrong. So he did pay me the $50. So that was Rain Pryor. Um, 
But the people in Baltimore came out, even on the late show. They came out. Yeah. Uh, so, people uh, in the comments are all commenting. Uh, the term, I believe, is black don't crack. So shout out. don't. There we go. Andre's yeah, mom. I don't know. My mom, she, she, I don't know what she does. Because I look older than my mama. I don't like, I'm like, I got to do something. <laughs> you do. Gotta you, get look like, yeah. you look like your mama's sugar daddy. I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> What's wrong with you? He do, he do. Look at that picture of him and his mama. He looked like he telling his, his wife, his woman, come on, it's time to go. He looked like her sugar dad. <laughs> he looked all young. Look at him. He do, don't he? Uh, <laughs> and you can't even say nothing against it, Chris. I got you know, nothing, Chris. buddy. I'm sorry. I'm here for you for moral support, <laughs> and that's about it. Support. Andre was the one who said, I look older than my mama, and we just agreed. That's all. Yeah. I, I I acknowledge it, man. He said she got to go start looking at younger men because the old guys have health issues. I said, don't go too <laughs> young because I ain't trying to call nobody Uncle Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> what if she gets somebody younger than you, Andre? Mm. It'll be Brother oh Daddy. Oh, no, we can't have no Brother Daddies going around here. Mm. Hey, like, what, if you be telling you, what if you be telling you what to do when he's like 20 or 30? Right. Oh, my God. Oh. That's a good question. You can't date nobody that I can't beat up. <laughs> <laughs> no one push from a young a young daddy gonna get you, Andre. Yeah. Yep. Your mama <laughs> your mama's young. She's vibrant. Like Yeah, she's she, fry. Yeah, she'd want mm -hmm. a somebody thirties. Oh no, young that's daddy. too young. Uh, she uh, says who? You or your mom? 65 got to be retirement age at least <laughs> if he's not if he's not a marshal on a golf course he's not allowed to talk to her okay oh listen God. if he hasn't applied to be a greeter at his local super center no sir no sir but i love how andre said no she don't want him that young who said that he did or she did because i never heard oh, we not already talked did. about it my mom and i have had a long conversation, you had a stern conversation. Uh, mm, mm. Mm. <laughs> so what if she met somebody that was very young you're much younger than her he kept her spry he kept her alive he kept her honestly glowing. whatever makes my mom happy but i don't like nobody it took me forever to warm up to my stepdad so i'm just protective <laughs> of my ladies in my life i'm protective of you yes. and she, you and kim so you know that's just that's the way i was brought up that's the way you are that's true and that's a lovely yeah. thing absolutely is a lovely thing well it, it went well you did you did really well you gotta come back out yet another show sherry i believe you met uh someone was this where was this at oh my gosh that's netta and charles y'all remember charles your lunch is ready charles. you know what i thought that was ving rames <laughs> What was that movie Ving Rhames did? You know that movie? Andre. Hmm? They watch the podcast. You can't. You can't. You can't. Who's this? this <laughs> Who's this? That's Andre. And that's uh, Carl <laughs> Special K. He's on uh, the Ricky Smiley Morning. Killed it, I heard. Heard he killed it. Had people DMing me from Baltimore saying, you know, they saw the show and everybody was lit. <laughs> uh, Special K goes out on the road with me, and he's also on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Him and Andre uh, were both on stage, and then me. So it's three of us, and uh, it was really, really great. But put up Charles and Netta for a minute. I wanted to say where I met them. Charles, your lunch is ready. Charles, your lunch is ready. That's how I go. I was trying to get this up. Charles, your lunch is ready. So they came, we were all at Lunell's show in Vegas. And they uh, were there to 
to see Lou Nail. So I went and said hi, and they said that they had come to my show, but because they were late, they put them in the back. I never saw them, because I would have started singing, Charles, your lunch is ready. What is that? They're like that? internet media phenoms. They're social media sensations. They've had plastic surgery. They sell cars. They sell hot sauce, um, skin, skin dermatology. So they are living out their best lives for their attachment. What is the Lunch is Ready song from? What does that mean? I don't know. She made it herself. Like, that's how they got went viral because she would make, he's a welder at a construction site. And so she would make his lunch and she would tell everybody what she was making. And then if he was home, you know, coming to get the lunch, she'd say, Charles, your lunch is ready. And it just caught on, Andre. Oh, and they okay. got married. They got married. She's it's a like a catchphrase at this point. It's a catchphrase. She's a transgender woman, and he's a, a man. He works at the construction site, and she just brings him lunch. But it became a viral hit. Charles, your lunch is ready. I love it. <laughs> so that's what all she says. They got a whole song. They made a video and everything. Like that guy, you're my little boo thing. I don't give a damn what you who thing, girl. I know, you know, just became tell him, tell him I'm nice. Tell him to tell him, tell him from fresh. I know. So they did the same thing. Uh, that was me at the Star Dome because I couldn't. At the Star Dome Comedy Club in at Birmingham, Alabama. That one was a sold out, sold out five shows, and it was really great. So. And Andre, and that was, oh my gosh, guess who that is? Somebody very tall. <laughs> I'm just, I just, I, my favorite thing is here, we'll show this real quick and we'll come back. There and there, like Sherry is living 14 and a half year old me's dream life. <laughs> Hanging out with Shaq and Jimmy Kimmel. Like if that, if I would have had to write a report, it'd be like, who would you spend a weekend with at the mall? I'd be like, Shaq and Jimmy Kimmel for sure. So congrats to you, Sherry. <laughs> Jack and Jimmy Kimmel. That you know, uh, that's that's Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, if we was to be dating, I don't know how that would even work out. Uh, he is. I'm five one. I got on. I got on uh, three and a half inch heels. So I'm five four in that. I would. So I'm even shorter. I'd go down to his belt buckle. That looked like he got me off the short bus. No, Sherry. <laughs> Chris caught the down. bus. We're short people. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to get. <laughs> the, bus, the the bus that's specifically <laughs> for short people. That's all I'm saying. Have you seen? He's dated short women before. He likes short women. Oh no, no, he like them short. Cause he like a he like to pick them up and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> Great to slow dance with. Hey now. <laughs> if I slow dance one, my arms will be around his booty. That's a that's a five hundred million dollar face, booty you're grabbing. My face will be right in his crotch. I mean, I'm too oh. short. Shaquille O'Neal. You said it. I didn't. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for cutting Andre off at that. I was worried he was gonna. Step oh my it. gosh, you nasty. Charles, <laughs> your lunch is ready. Uh, yeah, he's tall. He's tall we shit. have that the meats. That's not, <laughs> that's not Shaq. <laughs> we play celebrity family. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, what? A, I want to clarify to anybody watching or listening. That was Andre Lavelle, a black man who just said, Shaq did the We Have the Meats voice, not Chris Denman, confusing <laughs> not Chris just Denman. anyone. <laughs> that was Andre Lavelle. Was All right, I'm back Chris out. Denman. <laughs> uh, family Feud, the Celebrity Family Feud, it will be on December, the Christmas edition. And it is so fun. Gosh, that's uh, great. Lavelle, Team Sherry, it was hysteric. And I'll tell you who won, you just got to tune in. It was so much fun. And then I didn't. This picture right here just says it all. Right there, Isn't that, his hands uh, are behind you in the corner over there. 
Wasn't that, wasn't that Anthony? In the Anthony? Corner? Anthony, Anthony Anderson? No, Anthony Oh, Hall. his partner, Anthony. Yes. Yeah. That's his yeah. best friend, Anthony. I went to high school with him. Oh, he's you from did? Chicago. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, he's from Chicago. My, from Chicago. He was yeah. there. He played. He was one oh, of the players. Okay. When, is it, when is it air? Uh, our Christmas. So it's around December sometime. Before, oh, wow. Right before Christmas. They filmed so that much in advance. Guy. Huh? They filmed that far in advance? They just decided, it was supposed to be just a regular episode. And they decided they wanted to make it the Christmas edition. And good thing they did because it it just was really funny. We got great, great answers. It was funny, you know, up until the very end. So I don't know why they decided to make it a Christmas episode. I was playing for my friend's charity, Move In Day Mafia. And she said she's got uh, foster kids, black foster kids that have been accepted into a four-year college. But what happens is when they get to college, nobody helps them out with blankets, tampons, food. They only pay for room and board. That's it. So a lot of the foster Mm. kids drop out of college because they have no support financial. They can't join a a football team because they can't buy the cleats. They can't go home for Christmas because they don't have any money to fly back home. So they're stuck on campus. And so her program, Moving Day Mafia, uh, they have now, I think, over five HBCUs. And these are only for foster kids that have been accepted into the HBCU program because she's a graduate and alum of Howard University. She vows to take care of them from freshmen all the way to seniors. Two of her uh, foster kids have been accepted into schol- uh, internships at Disney, which is really great. So she really cares about the... the um, new kids coming out of foster homes, being in college and having everything they need to, you know, books to be able to go to class and to be able to join sports if they want to. We had Tej, so that was, we had um, Tej, we had Tej Mercer on as a guest. Oh, and, TJ. Yes. She came on our show. Yeah, absolutely. I say, uh, it was cool really out. nice to see you in your element, Sherry. Uh, for anybody who has an opportunity to see Sherry perform live doing our stand up. It's it's a mixture of her stand up and the Sherry Shepherd show, because <laughs> it, it was it was you were doing your thing, man. It, it it was real cool. I never did get to ask you. You get a ticket. You get a ticket. You get a ticket. <laughs> you get a ticket. I did, I did not say that. I did not say that. I was gonna ask you what you thought of my show, how you thought I handled the crowd, what I was giving them. It was, it was it was amazing, man. Like I said, I enjoy watching you in your element. Your fans are phenomenal. And uh, I just won't ask whose birthday is it anymore when I do my set. Because <laughs> here's the thing that Andre started. He would say, whose birthday? And one person would raise their hand. Then 12 people over there. Then 13 people around the corner. Three in the front. And they all wanted a special birthday Shout out. <laughs> uh, they want Andre to sing a song to them each individually. So <laughs> one day he asked, and the lady stood up, it's my birthday. So he was like, everybody say happy birthday to, to Cheryl. Then two more people stood up. And he was like, okay, everybody say happy birthday to them too. He didn't even get their name. That's what was so funny. <laughs> and we were looking at him on the monitor going, what, did, what door has Andre opened up? <laughs> It was very it was good, good show. If you didn't get to come out to Baltimore during the five shows, we got to come back next at like with a bigger theater, a bigger, bigger, a bigger uh, venue. But it was amazing. It was so like packed with happy people. Energy. Oh man, the energy. That's the. Sh- yeah. It's not it, that feeling right there. It's like I took a handful of gummy edibles, Jack. I was high, <laughs> boy, off of that crowd. <laughs> they were good. They was yeah, really good. good. So thank you for coming, Andre. I love you for coming. You got to come back. Thank you for having me. And uh, I know you're not wearing all them shoes. A couple pair, I can see them on Kim's closet. I, I can see them. <laughs> I can see them on Kim's closet. I think I Kim's closet dot com. K Y M closet dot com. And uh, what size shoe you wear, Sherry? <laughs> a nine, nine and a half. 
Yeah, we're going to have some nine, nine and a half Sherry Shepherd shoes <laughs> on Kim's closet real soon because you can't wear all of them. No, I, know I don't. Them right really... there, they hurt. Them right there behind your head, I know they hurt your feet. I know they hurt your feet. These? Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't wear them too much. I don't wear them too much anymore. These are the big ones. These are um, I got them. I got them separated for color. Those are my big goodness. Ones. Yeah, those are big. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah, I don't because the heels are too high. I'm not. I'm not in my twenties like I used to be. So a lot of the shoes I don't wear, and they've been in boxes in storage. So I finally took them out of storage because I had a. A big enough space to put them all in. So don't think that I wear all of these shoes. I probably wear about eight of all of pairs of all of these shoes. It's just that they've been all in storage for so long. You still had those boxes that you took them out of? Hmm? You still had those boxes that you took them out of? Yes, I do. But you can just put them right back in that box and send them to LA. Uh send them to Kim's house and now put them in the in the garage with your uh furniture that you have in there <laughs> that's not furniture that's a that's a, 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 a vanity i got a vanity over there and i think i got my bike over there what else do oh, I that have bike about to get sold you better get that bike quick it's gonna get sold i would like that bike <laughs> i would like you to ship my bike to me in new york because i can ride it you know you do that please kim getting her cleaning spurts when she's getting her cleaning spurts Everything got to go, or at least get rearranged. More likely, it's gonna get yes, rearranged. Yes, no, that's a that's a big vanity uh, in her garage. I got to find somebody to ship it to New York. Um, also, I got a box of T-shirts there. I would like. Can you please get my bike shipped out to me in New York? To New York. Did you move? I want that bike. Hmm. You moved. You moved. Is that that Meloton? Yeah. No, no, it's a it's nice. A, it's a, it's a, Meloton. Do you remember the Meloton? <laughs> Me and Andre would go biking. He made Jeffrey. My, Jeff, Andre was cold for this one. He taught Jeffrey how to ride a bike. He made Jeffrey ride all the way to Kim's house. That's down a hill and up a hill. <laughs> Kim lived about 10 miles away. and I was so mad when Jeffrey took. He was like, I don't ever want to ride the bike again. He didn't got traumatized. <laughs> And Andre made him ride it back. Hey, that was a good workout. Down that hill. He enjoyed Please. it. He had a good time. We we're where's both my, tired, though. Where's Jeffrey's bike? Where's Jeffrey's bike? Did you take it? Yeah, I have it. What are you doing with it? Riding the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you do. That's part of my flat belly routine. I'm hey, getting it together. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out where Jeffrey's bike because for our birthday, for Jeffrey's uh, 16th birthday, I believe, and my birthday, I went to the store and I bought us two like custom made bikes so we could go ride. And Jeffrey didn't like it. And the first day I rode my bike, my sundress, I was trying to be cute in like this long sundress that I saw people in the commercials ride. And my sundress got caught in the spokes of the wheel. And thank goodness it was like going into nighttime. So my dress literally ripped off of my body. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't no. move the bike. So I had to I had to get off the bike and walk it in my bra in my panties. Jeffrey was laughing at me. By this time it's dark. So nobody can see me. Thank God. Like see, Mickey just said, if you don't know your plans, God do. The bike, it had turned into dust. So uh, you couldn't see me unless you came back in a car, which many cars did, because I had my 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 bra my panties on wheeling this bike, big old bike. Was it matching? Yes, was it were matching, matching set? Oh, okay. it was in California. They probably thought it was a, a, a bikini. Did it with all the time. You was good. Yeah, but it's even still walking around in a bikini in the middle of the street. Jeffrey wouldn't stop laughing. So I was so humiliated. <laughs> then we had to take the bike back to the bike store because I couldn't get the dress out. And this man was like, what do you do here? He couldn't even, so he took it to like five other guys to show him. And they kept looking at me. I was so embarrassed. Oh my gosh. Because you was in brown panties. 
Huh? She was in bra and panties. Yeah. You think they well, not when it? I took the bike. Not when I took the bike back to the shop, but yeah, I had to walk oh, home. Okay. Like nine houses. And then me and you would go mm-hmm. riding the bike. That was fun. That was fun riding the bike. We had a good time. But now what I want you to do is I want you to take my bike, all of the parts. The, you don't I don't I don't know if I need the wheels because they're flat. They got a hole in them, right? Uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's been sitting up on the, it's hanging off of the, the ceiling. So it's been hanging for a year and okay, a half. Okay, can you get it off of the ceiling? Take it to, um, who you got to take it to, to to get it all shipped out? And I'll cash it. Mr. Mr. Ba- Mr. Bike Man, I believe. Mr. Bike Man. <laughs> I want my bike. You want me to disassemble it? You want it is to- disassemble. Ooh, that sounds March? expensive. That sounds expensive, doesn't it, Andre? Yeah, it's heavy too. <sighs> He's just trying to get my bike. We'll Damn just it. buy another bike. Buy another bike. I know, but I don't know if I'm going to find a purple one like that. What would it Who's cost to ship a bike? bike? 200 bucks? Where, where, what part are you still in? in uh, what part Ireland. of New York are you in? You in Harlem? Ireland. I'm sure somebody yeah. know how to spray paint a bike in Harlem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. that was... Okay, that was so wrong. <laughs> He's practical, Sherry. All that graffiti, all them graffiti artists, they just break hey, the bike. You with the purple, come here. <laughs> with all of the cans. Who's gonna take my bike if it's in Kim's garage? <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, who's going to take my bike? You get that dude who was in the front of your apartment every morning. Uh, Miss Sherry, oh, Miss Sherry, you know, I got <laughs> the bike. You want me to get the bike for you, Miss Sherry? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on just a second. <laughs> <laughs> when I, and he don't sound like that. Don't crap. mind me. I get it for you. <laughs> <laughs> he stands in front of my brownstone. Every morning at 2 a.m., I wake up and he's like, Ugh! <laughs> and he doesn't stop. How much throw up can one man have? And I, like I said, I used to feel bad because I thought he was sick. I, you know, but he just be getting drunk. He get drunk every day, and he come and he stand in front of my. <laughs> That's all he does. Oh my gosh. I'd be worried about him if I didn't hear him in the morning at 2 a.m. Throwing up his innards. How oh, my girl do it? What girl? Oh, boy. Lexi. Lexi. Oh, she was up here, but Jeffrey took her downstairs because she was whining. So he's got to take her out. She's good. She's 14. Uh, let me see. December, she turned 14. Now, you know, a con- a course those lifespan. For a boy is 10 years old to 12. For a girl is 13 to 14. So she is still coming up and down four and five levels of brownstone stairs. Um, I love her. She does not like to be by herself since Ashley died. She cannot, no matter where you are in the brownstone, she will come be with you. She will not sleep. If I put stuff in front of the stairs because I don't like her climbing the stairs, she moves everything with her head. She cries a long time. And I put the pillow over my ears because I'm only doing it because I love her because she shouldn't be climbing the stairs. But she will move everything with her head. Next thing I know, she right on the side of my bed laying down sleep. Mm. So I yeah, pray that God will let me have her for a, a few more years with no pain. She's got a lot of arthritis. But she got she, she's, she's still a good guard dog. When I take her walking at nighttime, people move out the way. They don't play with me. So... She right here though. No, she's downstairs. So she's good. And I'm gonna have to get off the cause I'm hot flashing up here. And I wanna go down and I don't have to go to work tomorrow, but I got I gotta go to work. Um uh, what's today? Thursday or Friday? Today is Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. So I got a, a few things I gotta do Friday. Um and then I'm going to binge on some more fire, Chicago fire. I, you, oh, know you know what, what you need to watch? Some... What? MLK uh, X on on uh, 
National Geographic or Hulu. Hulu. Is that it's, a it's, documentary? It's, no, it's a uh, It sounds so disappointed. Because I don't feel like documentary on a Thursday night at 11 o'clock. No, it's, 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 it's an amazing series about the correlation between the lives of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. And it, the acting is good. It's well shot. Is it it's fiction? Really, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. No, it's not fiction. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Okay, stop trying to make me sound dumb, Andre. What I meant was, is it a fictionalized account? Like the show Harlem with... with uh, no, it's not Whitaker's a fictional life. account. Okay. I, I'm too tired to do true stuff right now. That's all I'm saying. So... No, it's really what good. I'm it's really good. Is Griselda Blanco, the narco woman? <laughs> that's what I. That's all I can handle at eleven o'clock at night. Now, I could do Martin Luther King and Malcolm X tomorrow at ten o'clock in the morning when I'm up, but on a Thursday night, I just I don't want to think. I just want to veg. Right. Griselda Blanco was amazing. Uh, Chicago Fire is really really good. Uh, Yellowstone, like well, I don't have to think. Okay, right. you don't read the room well. I just said I was tired. You know, you know what? Watch Malcolm X and, and uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Martin Luther King. It's the correlation between Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and how they bonded. And then, and then the whole world and Fred Hammond from the Black Panthers. And they got Fred Hammond, which morphed to the gospel singer. Watch that. Make your mind go crazy with the whole conspiracy. That it's 11 o'clock at night. Can't handle all of that. And then for dessert, a little Oppenheimer. <laughs> I still ain't turned on Oppenheimer. It's too, I keep telling myself, ah, oh, you should have saw it in theaters, and then I still don't watch it at home. I'm like, damn. You haven't seen it? No. I, I, I watched it. I couldn't get into it. You know, it just, for me, I haven't seen it, so I can't judge you. That I could get into it. I need to watch it because everybody in their mama was in the movie. But How did they get uh, green light? I, we're gonna make a movie about the man who made the bomb. Oh, that's interesting. Ooh. Look how many award. Look at all the people in it. They're saying it's like a masterpiece. It's one of the biggest events in human award. history. You, but you remember when it won one of them awards at one of those Oscar shows and that naked man ran past? Them. No, 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 it wasn't the naked man. It was that black man that stood behind them. The white man was like, "Who the hell is this?" He just stood. It was a random black man. It was all of these white producers. This random black man just stood behind them and they was giving their speeches, but they kept looking at this man going, it ain't no black people in this movie. Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this black man? Before we go, did either yeah. of you see the whole, did either of you see the holdovers? I started watching it on the plane. That's where, uh, so uh, uh she won an Oscar. Um, Daphne Joy Devine. Divine. Divine. And I started watching it because I like Paul Giamatti. Divine Joy Randolph. Yeah, she was incredible. I listened to like three interviews with her. She's a classically trained opera singer. She got into acting. She's so talented. And Paul Giamatti's incredible. Sorry. Yeah. It's really good. I started watching it. I didn't finish because the plane was landing. They turned it off. So I have to finish watching it. Uh, the Holdovers. What other movie was Oscar nominated? Saw. Barbie. <gasps> Saw Barbie. Saw Watch anything on Tubi? No, no Tubi movie. <laughs> <laughs> why, why? What was with the aggressive furrow of the brow? Because he mad because Oppenheimer won, but didn't nothing get nominated from Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> I, mad that nothing got nominated for Tubi. I know we it, we're coming up on two hours here, but have you guys seen the previews for Civil War? No, I, I I'm not trying it. to watch that either. Because I, I just pretty much know what's going. I know how that one's going to end. All right. I don't. That's a redneck wet response. dream right there. Oh no, that's a twenty-four made that. It's just Nick Offerman's in it. Do you, you know who Nick Offerman is? No, it's a twenty-four is a great studio, but I'm more yeah. Yellowstone, Tulsa King, Chicago Fight, like. I work so hard. I don't want to be. Do you hear what Sherry just said? She just basically about those films. She said, "This ain't Texas." This ain't Texas. <laughs> She's ain't a cowgirl. No what about uh, down, good times down, on Netflix? Down, down, down. 
No. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. They got an all star okay. cast in go. the times. The yeah. times got all star cast. All right. Well, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to go be about it. <laughs> Are there any. Uh, <laughs> any comments so many comments you got there's people have held on strong we're coming up on two hours uh with this so thank you everybody uh incredible george wallace stopped by see mickey got to hang out and chat for a long time so that was great uh we have some comments hr is not trying to see civil war but then cheryl says chris that movie looks like it's going to be good uh mm saying it's your cowgirl sharing um <laughs> Good times is buffoonery. Should have never touched it, says HR. Wow, I didn't mean to read all that. <laughs> I thought yes, I, it's I, a, it hasn't sorry. been very good reviews for it, unfortunately. I have not seen it, but the reviews have not been good about it. They pretty much have been saying what HR is saying. But Don Trees, Don Trees, here's your comment. Chris, read the comments. Thanks, Don <laughs> Trees. Way to way to contribute. You're killing it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here's an actual question. Does Sherry, do you watch 911? That's with Angela Bassett. We were just talking about that with C. Mickey. There's Lone Star, uh, 911, and there's Angela Bassett's 911. Mickey was complaining about Lone Star because she's from Austin, and she doesn't like the, the way Austin is portrayed. She says they've written into the uh, storyline somebody that was near a volcano. No, I'll, There's no volcanoes in Austin. Mickey also, see, Mickey also didn't like the way they portrayed the accent because she said Austiners don't have a Texas accent because everybody in Austin is from L.A. So <laughs> you had a big problem with Lone Star because Austin doesn't even consider itself a part of Texas. It's literally L.A. planted in Texas. It's very progressive. So, no, I've not seen 911. Cali Girl wants you to have Godfrey on your TV show. Joseph, oh, Josephine says, appreciate you, Sherry. Thanks for always pushing through and showing up. Uh, Matthew Owens was commenting earlier. A couple people saying good night. Sorry, I'm trying to get back up here. People enjoyed uh, the holdovers. There's that. Uh, YR's in the house. A lot of oh, folks please. commenting on the entire show. Sorry, Andre. Oh, okay. You want to have a, a six pack challenge with me? Am I being supplied steroids and a uh, dietitian? And probably at this point, we're thinking a therapist. Uh, <laughs> and then I need someone to pick up the budget for uh, like an assistant or something, too. So, yeah, it's yeah literally, it should be an easy challenge, bro. Proteins. It's literally you eat more proteins and vegetables. That's all it is. Oh, I've done. I've things. I've cut weight. I've I've done all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm, I know what it takes. <laughs> it's just doing it. I know, brother. It's, it's doing it. I know. We should do something. Just, We've been just, talking about it for four years. Yeah, yeah, man. I need I need that. Yeah, y'all need to do something. Get push. off your butts and just do it. I was in the gym this morning. That's you. That that's literally. I, I know. There's all kinds of. That's really the only answer. That's the truth. You just got to do it. And you're coming yeah, out. Like, your, your birthday's in two days. Are you going to work out on your birthday? Look, look, check this out. Look, I'm freaking, that was me this morning. Is that Shaq's girl? <laughs> no, it, it's just Sherry. Look, because I got booty. that big ass belly. <laughs> I've been, I've been eating every day. I got that dang on belly I'm trying to get rid of. That is me in the gym working out this morning. Freaking 445. Your booty, though. The huh? booty. Where you get the booty from? In the gym. Oh. I built it in the gym. <laughs> built that. it in the gym. Who's the camera person? They 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 are in they are horrible. <laughs> it's my trainer. <laughs> Look at that. She all up in the ceiling. It's like go to the booty. I don't know where I'm at anymore. Yeah, there's there we go. She um yeah, she just, right, so since she just, Chris don't want to do it, you want to do six pack challenge? No, I said I do want to do it. I just have a couple stipulations. <laughs> you know, you name like eight stipulations. Yeah, therapist, uh, steroids, uh, somebody. See that up. arm definition? Look at that arm definition. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm seeing you. You getting it in? That's her pulling Shaq's head down for a smooch. 
<laughs> quite nasty. It's me doing sit-ups. That's a dog on 15 pound weight. That sucker out, 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 was, that was hurting. So anyway, all right. I, yeah. I, yeah. I went what? to the. How's your nutrition went, coming though? Because you know. Well, that's that's another story right there. That's, that's another the main story. part right there. It's Abs are made out. in the kitchen. Yeah. No. Today I had. Uh, <laughs> Yesterday I had asparagus, asparagus with salmon. I had that today. So you had a smelly pea. I had spinach oh, with I knew salmon. you were gonna say it. What? I had a ribeye with asparagus. What? What? Nothing. Asparagus. We're at. We are at one hour and fifty-seven minutes. Before we get out of here, we did not have the opportunity to bring on a black business tonight, but we have several lined up, and we're very excited to bring those back because those have been an excellent segment. People. When I tell you, people are tagging us now for the Lomar Farms stuff with Miracle Buttercream stuff. You got all these holidays coming up, all these great things. Big shout out to Cedar Lewis and Miracle Buttercream for being the Thank sponsor you, of uh, of Thank you. of the small business black did support you, a black business. You, I can't think. This black business support, I love it. Did you send out the Lomar Farms one hundred dollar certificates? We did. Remember, I texted you. We sent them out right away, and it'll be on your next bill. <laughs> I said, I we'll go ahead and pay for this so we're not dealing with an eight month <laughs> prize cycle. Because <laughs> sometimes it takes a sister eight months to pay, but it yeah. get paid. No, I meant, uh, <laughs> I just wanted the winners to get it. They did it. And also, we've got all kinds of books going out. Some people that didn't win the Lomar Farms gift certificates. Uh, I've got Hermela, who's a SLU student who's going to be a lawyer. She works for us. And then. Deja, we were working on getting the rest of those books out from Ida. That was so nice of you all to hook up. So Two Funny Mamas, the gift that keeps on giving. And you know what? Play your cards right. Maybe Andre Lavelle will show up at your door as a prize one day. Um, Be the deliverer. Be the deliverer. On Cherry's bike. <laughs> on my bike. <laughs> well, I'm glad everybody got their gifts. Lomar Farms is amazing. I just ordered a bunch of stuff. And I got it in yesterday, and I'm loving it. I ordered a ton of stuff. So I'm very, very happy. Lomarfarms.com. And for the month of April, take advantage of it. Put in TFM15. They will give you 15% off anything for the entire month of April. So uh, please take advantage of that because 15% is a lot if you, if you order some stuff. And great products made from these wax. I believe uh, TFM15... Oh, I'm sorry, Sherry. TFM 15 works for both, I believe. Miracle Buttercream and Lomar Farms. Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, and Miracle Buttercream. If you got the ashes, and Miracle Buttercream is no joke. Right there, elbows, for me, feet. You know what the lady said at the nail shop with me? With feet, with the cracking, she said, you a hard worker. <laughs> Miracle Buttercream. Right here in the studio. Miracle On that Miracle note... Butter before we get to yeah. too many other impressions, let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I don't want to. Oh my god! <laughs> did you want to show this video and then we'll go? What was the yes? Show why the did video. you want to? Why did you want to show this? All right, here we go. This is me coming out the. Con what? I, don't no. the music. Wait. He's got. No, this no, was a a thing from Instagram you sent me. No, that's got music on it, so we don't want to get in trouble. I can't show it because you can't show it without the music, can you? No, it's the clip of the young lady, of the girl. Were you just sending that to me? Of what girl? What are you talking about? Do I don't need it. Of what? Do no, that was for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, what is this? Do you know the mother? <laughs> That's for you. That was just a little <laughs> treat from Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Gosh, I can't believe you showed some of that. That's for you, Chris. Oh, that's you know. why I went to see the Wiz. I went to see the Wiz, and we had to wear emerald green. And my friend Candy Burris is one of the producers. She's going to be on my birthday show, by the way. Uh, and so I took a, I, I bought this green couch, and I don't like it. It's green. And uh, now I got to live with it for another about 10 years. <laughs> but at the store it looks so great. great it pretty. looks cool it looks cool you're like i'm gonna really buck a trend who needs black or brown they you gotta really do oatmeal they brought that green yeah. couch and 
I gotta look at it every day. It's not. It's not happening. Almost, and almost said, did it with a red one once. Oh, I'm glad you didn't do red. Yeah, but I got green, I got and it's paying for it. Andre, what Hi. what about Kim's closet? Kim's closet, K Y M, closet dot com, and uh, I'll, I'll ship that bike right over, and they should cross paths. The box of shoes and the bike cross paths. Well, do do me a favor. Do an estimate and ask UPS how much they're gonna charge. Because if it's over two hundred dollars, I don't want the bike. That's the most okay. I'm gonna pay. If they'll do it for that, I'll I want the bike. Tiff B forty two got her Lomar Farms order yesterday. Oh yes, TFM fifteen. All right, I gotta go. I'm tired. I gotta go to bed. Thank you much for everything. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, I'll check you on the next one, Chris. And let's get this ab challenge. What's what's gonna be the bet? The, the bet. bet. I just who play. can we we could see who would uh, we have to come up with some kind of healthy parameters because if I focus <coughs> like I can lose like half your body weight in like three months so that's not fair. Right, well, let's, oh. let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Oh, let's do it. Get chiseled. Okay. Let's get let's chiseled. Go. All right, yeah, I will then cheat. The next two funny mama show we can take our shirts off. Yeah, that'll be. <laughs> oh, that'll be nice. Twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. I would like to see your clothes come off. I think that would be amazing. June twelfth is my fortieth birthday, so this will be fit while I'm forty. We'll just come up with something like that. Love it. June second. Mm. Be what I'm gonna be. It'll be your thirty ninth. <laughs> Love it. All right. All right. Send the steroids. Send the uh, send the the meal plans. Send everything you got. Andre Lavelle, the Andre Lavelle on Instagram, Sherry E. Shepard on Instagram, follow at Two Funny Mamas on Instagram. If you haven't, tell your friends about it. Thank you so much to everybody. We're over 80,000 subscribers, and I think if we push, we're going to get to 20,000 20, more, which is 100,000. Really quick. Yum, yum. Great show, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks to C. Mickey. Thanks to George Wallace, and uh, love you guys. Bye, everybody. We love you, Cam. Thank you much. Two funny mamas. <laughs> Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. <laughs>